Hey there, welcome to the channel. So I've not made any gluten-free bread lately, so today I think it's time we make some. It's gluten-free, it's dairy-free, it's vegan with one simple swap that you can do. Let's make some gluten-free, no-need bread. I'm Jamie with Savory Saver. I share gluten-free recipes, tips, tricks, and resources to make your gluten-free lifestyle easier. So please consider hitting subscribe and let's get started. Today's recipe looks really easy to follow. It's only five ingredients, whether you make it non-vegan or vegan, it's an easy one swap that you need to do. The bread uses one gluten-free flour blend, and while this isn't controversial, some of you are not gonna be able to make it. I'm using Caputo's gluten-free flour blend. Now, this is the flour blend that I use for gluten-free pizza crust. It is by far my favorite so far. I think it makes really good crust and I usually get consistent results unless I'm having a day. The reason some of you may not be able to use this is the main ingredient is wheat starch. And while the gluten has been removed from the wheat, some people still have issues with it. So always use your best judgment for ingredients that are safe for you. If you have a wheat allergy, of course, the wheat hasn't been removed, so this isn't gonna work for wheat allergies either. I used to be able to find this flour at a grocery store near me, and now they no longer carry it, so it is available online, so I will link below if this is a flour you wanna check out. In regards to making pizza, it looks like it may be a little expensive, but if you like making your own pizza and are able to use this, this is way cheaper than going out and getting pizza. As always, the ingredient list will be below in the description along with that flour link if you need it. Also in the description will be a link to the full recipe from the blog site I pulled this from. Let's go over the ingredients real quick. This is in both measurements. I am doing it mostly by weight today, but the volume amounts are also on the recipe and I'll give them to you here. You're gonna need three cups or 475 grams of the Caputo gluten-free flour. The recipe does say that they have not tested this with other flours. I know that's sometimes a question I get in the comments, so this is strictly for this flour. It is divided in half. It says you may not need all of the other half of the flour amount. I think we're gonna use most of it, but I did divide it in half, so I've got half of that amount in each bowl. You're also gonna need one and three fourths cups or 410 grams of water. I'm gonna heat the water up to 110 degrees and that's gonna activate our yeast. Speaking of yeast, we are gonna use two and a quarter teaspoons or eight grams of instant yeast. We're gonna have two and a half teaspoons or 10 grams of fine salt and one teaspoon of honey. If you're making this vegan, you would use a teaspoon of sugar instead of honey. I'm not measuring the honey, guys. I'm gonna eyeball it. I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference and I don't want a sticky teaspoon measuring device or another small bowl. So this is the part I'm kind of measuring. You're also not going to need a mixer. The directions actually say to mix it with a fork. So we're gonna try that and see how well it works. All right, let's get to making this. So I've got a large bowl. To the bowl, I'm gonna add my water. And I actually, it's a little warmer than 110. I think it was like 111. I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna add my teaspoon of honey and that's gonna help the yeast activate. That looks about right. In goes my yeast. Let's give everything a whisk. Technically, instant yeast doesn't need to be activated with water. However, it does let you see if the yeast is alive and working. So when you see that in recipes, it, it's okay to use the instant yeast and activate it like this. All right, the recipe says to leave it for 10 minutes. I think that's a little long, but I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes and we'll come back and look at it. If it's done a little early, then we'll keep moving forward. So it's been 10 minutes and if you look really closely at the top, you can see these big bubbles, but these other bubbles in here are super teeny tiny, but it is definitely foamy. I'm gonna take that first half of the gluten-free flour and I'm gonna add my salt to it. The recipe doesn't say to do this, it says to add it all in here, but I'm gonna give it a good whisk just to distribute the salt a little evenly. Now I'm gonna add this to the wet ingredients and it says it's gonna be super sticky. So I'm expecting that. Let's see how the fork does. I do like that I don't have to get out the stand mixer for this one. It's not supposed to be a smooth dough yet, so it definitely is gonna need more flour. 
I'm gonna put an apron on because I know me, all that starch and that flour is gonna end up on this shirt if I don't do something. So let me put an apron on and we're gonna add the rest of that flour as much as we need. We'll see how that goes. For the rest of the flour, I can't imagine we're not gonna use most of it. So I'm gonna add about half of it at once. So not exact, but close. Let's see what this does to the dough because it's certainly not a dough. I wouldn't worry too much about lumps. The dough will hydrate and I don't think that's going to be an issue. You don't think, I don't think you want a super smooth dough. All right, let's add about half of what we have left. All right, so that's probably a quarter cup or so left. Let's see what this does. All right, my fork isn't scraping the sides. Well, let's take a spatula. I'll go back to the fork in a second because I actually like this method. So let's scrape the sides really well. And if you have worked with a lot of gluten-free flours, you know that these starches stick like crazy to the bowl. And I don't like to clean that off my bowl or my utensils. So get underneath, make sure you're flipping it around. I think I'm gonna add the rest of the flour and be daring. Now I am beating the dough, but I'm just working the flour in. We're not gonna do anything after this. Okay, we do have some stickiness, but the recipe says fairly dry. And of course it has pulled away from the bowl. I'm gonna get the dough off my hands. I'm gonna grab my scraper and I'm gonna to try to get this into a better ball to rest on the bottom. The one thing it doesn't say is it doesn't say to grease the bowl, which is a little odd to me. I feel like that would make it a little easier, but we're gonna follow the process and hopefully everything comes out okay. Okay, so I think I'm liking the look of that. I scraped the bowl. It is sticky on the bottom. I don't know if I need to add any flour to the bottom or not. You know what, I think I'm going to. Hopefully as it rises, the stickiness will lessen because it's gonna absorb the water that's in there. So, speaking of rising, this says to put it in a warm place for an hour and a half. In cold weather, it may take closer to two hours. I like using my oven, so I've turned my oven on to the lowest setting. I hit preheat, that's 170 degrees, but then I only let it preheat for a minute and then turned it off. So I am going to put it in that warm oven to rise. I'm going to let it rise in my oven for an hour because it says to preheat the oven for about 20 or 30 minutes prior to baking. So if it's an hour and a half rise, hopefully when I take this out in an hour, it'll look pretty good. It'll still get a half hour rise time as the oven preheats. So let's cover this. I'm going to rise it for an hour. While that happens, let's go over what I'm going to do for my pot to cook it in because we are cooking this in a Dutch oven. So I've got a Dutch oven here. The recipe does not say what size Dutch oven. This is a three quart. I'm sure you could use your five or six quart or four quart. I don't even know if they come in that size, but this is a three quart. I think it's gonna keep the bread a little more contained for me, but if you have a five quart or six quart, don't let that stop you from trying this recipe. We're gonna shape and bake it on parchment. So when the dough comes out before it goes into this, it's gonna go on here. So I wanna shape it beforehand because we're preheating the pot in the oven at 450 degrees, and I don't wanna mess with that when I'm putting this into there at that point. So let's see if we can get some kind of shape. Okay, so I've got it there, and then I'm hoping when I take it out, I've kinda of got my circle here. So I'm gonna to aim to put the dough in the middle of this, that way there I can lift all this up and put it in the pot. So it's about 45 minutes in and look how much it has risen. So I'm gonna call this doubled in size. I don't think it needs to go any longer. I am gonna let it sit on the counter at room temperature covered. I just put my Dutch oven with the lid in the oven and set the oven to 450 degrees. I'm gonna let it go for about 20 to 30 minutes and then I'm gonna bake this off. So in about 20 minutes, 
I'm going to double check this as well as the oven. And if they're ready, I may just get this in the oven because that's pretty big. So the oven's been preheating for 20 minutes. It does say it's at the 450. And because this is so big, I'm gonna get this transferred over. So it says to gently plop the dough onto the parchment paper. Let's see how that works. It says to use a dough scraper or a spoon. I'm using my silicone spatula. It's not sticky on the top. So I'm just gonna start pushing it a little bit, hopefully not deflating too much. Cause I don't know that I wanna dump it upside down. So it is shrinking it down some because I'm kind of compressing it. But try to work it out outward as you're moving it. And I'm trying to still keep it in a round shape. Okay, so that by far has been the hardest part of the recipe and it's very slow and steady. So the bowl is pretty clean. So just take your time with it and I think you'll be okay. Let's reshape this a little bit back into its round shape. I'm gonna try to also get it a little more even. All right, now I need to get this into the pot that is 450 degrees. So I'm gonna slide this out of the way. There's my landing pad. Let me get the pot. I'm gonna take the lid off and just put the pot here. We are gonna bake it covered for a while and part of the time without. So let's see how much of this I can get filmed for you guys. Lid off. I got the bread dough behind. I'm gonna try to gather the corners. Let's lower it into the pot. The lid goes back on. Let me get this in the oven and then I'll tell you what the directions are. It's back in the oven and now we need to bake it for 30 minutes covered. After the 30 minutes, remove the lid and bake it for an additional 10 to 15 minutes until it's the desired golden brown that you would like. Now, let me say this bread does not say to bake to a temperature but bread is usually somewhere between 200 to 10, if I'm not mistaken, I don't have that in front of me. So if you bake to temperature, you will know your bread is done. I may not just because this one doesn't give me directions to do that. Once it comes out of the oven, I'll show you guys that process of because I've got to get it back out of that hot pan. We'll be back in just a second. So it's been the full 45 minute bake time, 30 minutes covered, 15 minutes uncovered. Let's get it out of the pot. The pot is super hot, so be careful. The parchment paper, should be touchable though. So let's go up and to there. All right guys, there's our bread. Nice and crisp, pretty golden brown at the top. This is where the parchment paper covered, so it's not gonna be as brown there. I don't know if I can see the bottom or not. Let's check the bottom. That's what the bottom looks like. We're gonna leave to let this cool. So I'm gonna cool it for a while, probably longer than 30 minutes. So I'm gonna cool it. I'll get a couple slices cut and we're gonna give it a try. Let's talk about this bread. That's what it looks like on the inside. Those little lines that you see, that's my bad cutting job. But listen, nice and crusty. Crumb is amazing looking for gluten-free bread. It looks like real bread. It smells like real bread. There's a slice of it. Let's take a taste of it, and then I'll tell you my biggest issues with this recipe, and there weren't many. So my typical, here's my bread. I got the end, one piece without that we always taste first because butter makes it better, of course, even if it sucks. So we're having BLTs tonight using this bread. So I'm eating fully gluten-free tonight as well, at least in the sandwich department. So I'm hoping to have this video out in a couple days. As always, if you want to know Tara's thoughts, drop it in the comments below. I'll let you know what she thought of the bread. She's excited about it because I've already texted her a picture. Let's try it. 
very good texture and chew. It's got the crusty outside, the chewy inside, tastes like real bread. I don't notice an aftertaste, which I love. So there is a little bit of chew difference between this and real bread. Scratch that. This is real bread. It's just gluten-free bread. But there is a slightly different chew to this than traditional bread, but it's fine. I, I have no issues with the texture of this bread just being gluten-full as opposed to Tara being gluten-free. I can tell a little bit of a difference. I don't think it tastes overly starchy, which is one of the things I do like with wheat starch is that the taste of it tends to be better than some of the other starches, in my opinion. Okay, let's try the butter piece, even though I don't know why I'm going to, because it's going to be even better because it has butter on it. Good texture, good taste, really good taste with the butter. Let's take a closer look at here. I'm coming closer. It's cooked all the way through. I don't see any of that starch line that some of my videos actually have because it doesn't cook all the way. This is really good. This for me could actually be a little darker, but it's cooked through all the way. So who cares if it's as golden as I would like. Bottom of it, pretty golden there. The piece, the actual piece, look, it flexes, it bends, it's not broken yet. Now, here are my only two problems with this recipe, and they're not very big problems. One, I didn't like taking it from the bowl to the parchment paper because it didn't have any oil on the bottom. I don't know if the oil would make a difference or not on the bottom and along the sides of that bowl, so that might be worth trying just to prevent some sticking, but I was able to get it all out and reshape it, so that kind of balances that whole sticking that it did to me. The other thing I didn't like, which I think is a me thing, I always grab a serrated knife with breads because it's a better slice for me. I use this knife for tomatoes a lot of times because of the serration. I got to the bottom of the bread, and when I hit the bottom of the loaf, it didn't want to cut anymore. I think part of that is because it's so heavily starched in regards to ingredients that I think it just stuck a little more. So I ended up getting a straight edge to finish it. Again, my problem, not the bread's problem, not the taste, not the texture. This was a really well-written recipe. I liked how easy it was to follow. I liked how easy it was to get the ingredients, even though I have to order one online. However, I did a little bit of research while I was waiting for it to cool, and I actually may be able to get it somewhere relatively close to me. Good recipe, no big complaints. If you can actually have caputo flour, I would definitely buy some and try this recipe. I also, like I said, pizza crust is by far my favorite pizza crust that I have made of any of the videos I've done on this channel for pizza crust. The caputo gives me the best results and most consistent results because sometimes I still screw it up. Guys, what do you think? Are you a Caputo fan or not? I know some of my viewers already say they don't use this, and I appreciate you flat out telling me that. Guys, that's all I have for today. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.